Good, e good evening to you all. You have just heard a statement from the chairman of the governing body of the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. The governing body of the International Treaty is the world's foremost governance forum for plant genetic resources for agriculture and food security. And as the chairman mentioned, the International Treaty establishes a multilateral system that has created a global gene pool of plant genetic resources. And over the past five years, as we have built up the system, uh, we have included about 1.6 million samples of plant genetic resources in this uh, gene pool that are today documented. Legally, there are far more uh, included in the system. And within that system, we currently transfer about six to 800 uh, accessions of plant genetic material per day worldwide uh, under standard contracts, so-called standard material transfer agreements. Now, this multilateral system, as the chair also mentioned, is not just a gene pool of physical plant material. It is also a pool of innovation, of the results of breeding, uh, and research. And the International Treaty includes a number of provisions that very much in the spirit of open facilitated exchange of both germplasm and the results of innovation uh, ensures global food security by facilitating the creation of new plant varieties that will be able to meet uh, forthcoming challenges that were mentioned earlier, such as climate change adaptation, etc. The treaty does this by recognizing innovation, both in the form of farmers' innovations and farmers' knowledge in the form of farmers' rights under one part and article of the treaty, and by recognizing the innovation uh, and research that breeders uh, and modern science contribute to food security. Uh, the treaty model of IP management, so to speak, uh, ensures that the genetic material uh, as well as the results of breeding are available widely, global, globally, worldwide uh, to ensure food security. How does the treaty multilateral system, this gene pool of 1.6 million samples of genetic material and this IP management model do this? There are three, I would like to mention just three uh, main parameters which are embedded in the treaty text itself. And the first one relates to access, access to the germplasm uh, and access to the innovations on it. The treaty here provides that recipients shall not claim any intellectual or other property rights that limit facilitated access to plant genetic resources for food and agriculture or their genetic parts and components in the form in which they were received from the system. Secondly, it also states that access to these genetic resources, uh, to those genetic resources which are protected by intellectual property or other property rights, shall be consistent with the international agreements uh, and national laws relating to and making available intellectual property. The second uh, parameter relates to non-monetary benefit sharing, uh, particularly in the form of information exchange and technology transfer and capacity building. And here the treaty provides that access to and transfer of technologies uh, which utilize such genetic material, including those technologies protected by IP, uh, to developing countries uh, and, uh, and contracting parties uh, shall be provided on fair and most favorable terms. And such access to uh, and transfer of technology shall be, again, consistent with and in recognition of adequate and effective protection of intellectual property. And finally, the third parameter is monetary benefit sharing, where the treaty provides that whenever a product is developed which incorporates genetic material that was received from the multilateral system, from the gene pool, and when that product is not available for further research, breeding, and training without restriction, such as when that product uh, is under an intellectual property title which restricts such use, then the recipient of the genetic material shall pay a standard contribution of 1.1% minus 30% of the net sales from that product back to the multilateral system through its benefit sharing fund. 
and those resources are then utilized and again distributed by that benefit sharing fund to farmers in developing countries who conserve and sustainably utilize plant genetic resources and thereby conserve the genetic diversity which we all depend on for future food security and for adaptation uh, to climate change. Thank you.